What happens when you take 13 of Saskatchewan's best and most creative chefs? Along with a room full of local celebrities from the worlds of arts, politics and entertainment. and introduce them to 17 dedicated organic farmers and the exceptional products they produce. Well, you might just get yourself an invitation to Dining with the Stars. So this is kind oh my of the goodness. palette of what we're going to be using in our meal. Now the fact that I only recognize maybe a third of them, boy that's... And these are all, with the exception of this little item, are from about 150 miles max around Birch Hills, which is where the restaurant is. Wow. So what I thought we'd do for the first course is kind of highlight where I'm from and where I grew up, which is Lorange, north of Lorange. So we're going to do, as the appetizer course, a mini shore lunch. So kind of a tipped up, modernized, gourmet-ish version of what you'd get if you were on a guided fishing trip. Pickerel. We'll have pickerel cakes with a wild hazelnut crust, drizzled with honey, and then golden flax bannock. That's something that I make every day. And it's with half whole wheat, half white flour, golden flax from Tom Teen uh, Flax Farm near Birch Hills. Estimate how long you think it'll take me to crack all of these and then times it by two. <laughs> they're tiny, you just get a tiny, tiny little... So these are wild hazelnuts and they're from one of my customers' lawns. Wild he was hazelnuts? Them up. Yeah, and this is just the second and stage. We don't, I didn't bring a nutcracker with me, but it comes so you in... you can a, actually crack a nut that small? You will crack it, yeah. And then that's what be, our picker will be crusted in. And this honey is from Calvin and Jocelyn Parsons from Mescanal. No, and what are if those? you're brave, you can try this. This is smoked cayenne pepper, and it's smoked by a guy named Leo Grimard from St. Louis. So that'll kind of be in with the honey. So you get a little bit of a sweet, a little bit of a crunch, a little bit of a, little bit of a heat. A little bit of a burn to it? Yeah. So. Oh, that's exciting. And then, oh yes. So this is kind of, I thought we'd do for the soup course, this is where I'm from. This is where we are now, so the prairies and all the bounty that they have to offer. Uh, Muscaday First Nation, which is about 15 kilometers north of us, has a wonderful um, program that they started in conjunction with Heifer International. And they have a potato growing operation, so they literally have tons of potatoes. And they feed their community first, and then they sell to, I think they're actually heavily involved with CHEP here in Saskatoon, mm. providing, and they're organic, certified organic potatoes. No, so we'll have a... Oh, so it'll be a, like a red potato, white potato, does it... It'll be they... a white potato, the one that I'm using, because that's what they have left at this point. So good. So we're going to make a soup out of that, and it'll be all the flavors of a samosa. And crab apples from my backyard tree. So we'll roast, oh, and cauliflower from Keith New. He's doing what not a lot of other producers are doing. He's actually freezing produce. So you, need, you don't go into Superstore and find frozen Saskatchewan rhubarb. You just don't. And at the time when it's in season, they can't give it away. So he's kind of trying to develop this frozen industry, which I think is really cool. So we're going to roast cauliflower, um, crab apples, garlic, onions, add it to the potatoes, and that'll be our soup. And this is really cool. Just crunch that and taste it, if you like. I have one lady that's about six kilometers away from me that grows all my herbs fresh throughout the year. I go out on Thursdays to harvest um, flowers, herbs, and vegetables, and then I make the dinner with it that night. And That's then she nice. dries. I have bags and bags of dry. This is coriander. Mm. So that'll be the seasoning in the soup. Okay, are we full yet or should we go on? The main event, we're going to kind of highlight a bit of your heritage. I'd like to do, with your permission, an Aussie Rules lamb meat pie. With whole oh. wheat crust. That sounds wonderful. And one of our producers, um, who, this is a nasturtium. I wonder if there's a little spoon here. Nasturtium habanero jelly. 
jelly. Nasturtium. But that, I think with the lamb, she has a wild, like literally wild from the bush, mint jelly that we'll use to go with the lamb. Well, that's very tasty. Mm. It's not a, like with crackers at all. I love these two colors together. This is the rosemary. It's got a bit of a bite to it though. It does. Like it, 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 takes sure a, does. it takes a moment and then, ah. Yeah. And that's you can nice. use it in a sweet dish too. Okay. And this is the rosemary. I think I'll cook the lamb with Guinness, kind of the Irish. Well, the Irish nod, influence. Nod okay. The Irishman. Yeah. And um, rosemary as well. That, and uh, a little bit of umar might. Okay, so that's what we'll do for the main course. Oh, and we have wonderful rice from Canadian Lake Wild Rice. So I think we'll work that into a slaw. After the last of the local lettuce, I don't serve leafy salads much to some of my customers' chagrin, but I just do not want to do imported lettuce. So we do okay. lots of slaws. So by April, everyone's just like slawed right out. But right now we're okay. So we use a heritage carrot from this lady, the herb lady, and that striped Italian beets, chioga beets. And then we'll put some of the wild rice in there and we will do for that, I don't know what kind of a dressing will we, oh, and I think we'll, this is Labrador tea. Are you familiar Lab with that? No. It grows in the boreal forest near blueberries. Let's try a little bit of that. It's used in um, a lot of Cree medicines, so you have to respect it and not go crazy with it. But I call it bush basil because you can use it kind of in place of where you would use basil. And I'm just backtracking a bit. That's going to go in our fish dish as well. Okay. It's nice to use ingredients that would be found near each other. So the pickerel and the northern pike with the, oh, do you like dessert? You're not on a diet. Um, I'm on a diet, but I cheat. I, I, I try and cheat one day every couple of weekends, okay. and I haven't cheated in weeks. This has to be your cheat. I've been saving myself for this. Perfect. Mm. So we're going to do just a celebration of local organic food. Cake and ice cream, what could be more celebratory than that, but we're going to change it up a bit. I did this dish for the Saskatchewan Pulse Growers field lunch, and it was a lot of fun. A split green pea. Um, so these are organic peas from Maymont, Saskatchewan. Oh. That might be stretching 150 mile thing a little bit. So we're going to cook those, mush them up, and add it to the cake, which sounds disgusting, but it is so, so moist. I love split green pea soup. I've never heard of a cocoa. So we'll have the soup on Wednesday. I'll save some of that, puree it. No. <laughs> we won't do that. But that'll go into our chocolate cake. We'll use dark organic chocolate uh, cocoa powder. Try one of those. That's a sea buckthorn berry. There's more vitamin C in this little guy than probably half an orange. And you can eat the seed as well. They're kind of the new superstar on the medicinal food scene. Very tasty. Native to Russia, so of course they grow very well here. And that's a sea buck. Sea buckthorn. Buckthorn. Yeah, China and Russia. I so have to have another one. So that'll be, I'm going to cook that down, make a little syrup, and then that'll be our ice cream, a sea buckthorn ice cream. Mm. What are we missing here that I think we've gone through it all? Lentils, I love lentils. I don't know what I'm going to do with them, but they will be in our meal somehow, somewhere. So is there anything else you can think, like any requests you'd like to have? Or That sounds that so food? impressive. I'm, I, I love lentils. And I'm eating more lentils these days than I've than I've ever eaten before. So I'm uh, I'm interested in whatever you do with lentils. Good. I don't think there's been a day at the restaurant that I haven't had lentils on my menu. So if there yeah. ever was, people would probably check my temperature. <laughs> well, they're very versatile, aren't they? You they can are. do so much with them. Yeah, for sure. And that looks. I, I I feel just talking with you and looking at the menu. I I feel so uninformed because I, I've, I've labored under this this misapprehension most of my life that organic is meats you know name the meats uh, primary vegetables that sort of thing but when I see these um, boy this is uh, I'm really looking forward to this thank you I am too it's going to be fun and now I'll go get cooking <laughs>
do a talk show on the radio and it's people like Jenny who help inspire me because she emails me with all sorts of suggestions and thoughts and I never say they're from her. I just swipe them and make them my own. Um, and Jenny's one of the people who is really revitalizing rural Saskatchewan. You look at the, the place we're in tonight, the kind of food you eat here, uh, this is the sort of stuff that a few years ago you couldn't get in Saskatoon and Regina. So uh, I'm honored to be here and uh, really looking forward to dinner. Um, we're here because we are part of the menu. We make uh, red clover blossom syrup as well as black pansy, rose petal. We also have products that are made out of other things that we pick from the boreal forest. Um, we've picked fireweed and made fireweed jelly, but I believe tonight that Jenny is serving something called fireweed uh, tea or fireweed punch, which is on the table, so that'll be fabulous. Hello, I'm John J. Cook. Um, Jenny invited me to come as the entertainment and I said yes right away. Anytime we've come here, Jenny has never ceased to amaze us with her fabulous food. <laughs> it excites the palate. Hi, my name is Andrew Ross. I'm Jenny's brother, and the reason why I came here is to, is to hear John G. Cook sing, and I hope you enjoy the meal, and I'll turn it over to Mick. Hi, my name is Mick Taylor. I guess I'm responsible for everybody being here tonight. <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> I'm Jenny. This is my lovely daughter, Emma. She's going to be our server. We've, we're going to have a couple other servers, and with one thing and another, we're it. So if we're not serving you something that you'd like to be served, beverages and such, let us know, and we will bring it out to you. And a lot of you know me well enough, you can just come and get it yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> so the first course, John, Things change. What we talked about on Monday is maybe not exactly what, all the components are there, but the logistics are a little different. The first course, we're kind of going to um, honor the spirit and the ingredients of the North. Lorange, Lampley, Gregora. So we're, it's kind of like a mini shore lunch. If you've ever been fishing and you go to the shore, fry up some fish, but a little more involved. So we have a Cajun-ish, meaning don't be alarmed, it's not going to set your head on fire. Um, hazelnut crusted pickerel cake and for the heat we use smoked cayenne peppers from Leo Grimard who is Ellen's brother-in-law and we also use Lynn is it a habanero nasturtium jelly? Nasturtium and habanero yes. yes that's right in there with a little bit of cream cheese and a roux a nice dark roux all organic local veggies from Deb actually carrots celery garlic onions actually the garlic is from just down the street Cindy and um, Sheldon Jensen. Okay, and this is the 18 hour pickerel cake because it takes about that long to shell that many wild hazelnuts. <laughs> <laughs> and I was really kind of short of hazelnuts. I shelled for an hour and a half last night and I just got sick of it. And then at the back door about a half an hour ago one of my customers who gave me the nuts to begin with came with a whole half a cup of shelled hazelnuts. Mm -hmm. Yay Mike and Terry, thank you. Oh and under the under the pickerel cake is a buttercup squash. What else? Wild blueberries from the best store in the whole wide world, Robertson's Trading in Larange. Dad sent those on the bus last night. I like to pick and forage as many berries as I can, but the ones I picked are long gone, so they're supplemented by wonderful stuff from Robertson's. Um, oh, okay. I'll pass around the oil that's in the pesto, but it's Camellia. Camelina? That's not right. Camelina. Camelina. And it's processed and grown by three farmers, is the name of the company, and they're out of southeastern Saskatchewan. And that's a nice organic product. And they use the food center at the University of Saskatchewan to process it. If anybody's interested in getting, taking their food company a little bit bigger or wanting to develop some recipes, they are a wonderful resource, aren't they, for doing that? I'm thinking of doing that with my veggie burgers, actually. Yeah. Woo, I think we've, oh, and the pesto, the wild blueberry garlic camelino oil pesto is on top of our golden flats bannock. All right. Do you want me to read that? Or is that too much? <laughs> ah, we'll do it later. Okay. <laughs> Let's eat. It's good way to eat cauliflower. Yeah, and I don't even like cauliflower. I like this. <laughs> yeah. Well, how many times I've had people say, well, I don't like parsons, but. Yeah. Yeah. 
We do want to hear from next from Keith New to talk a little bit about his experience in setting up a CSA. Now, we've heard of CSAs that uh, are close to a metropolitan area in close to Chicago, right? Population base, etc. Keith farms in Hudson Bay, Saskatchewan, but a lot of his consumers, his customers, are in Saskatoon. Well, my name's Keith New, and I want to be your farmer. Some studies say that there's no difference nutritionally between organic food and regular food. My, when I grow my food on this ground, you can taste the difference. It's real food. Between what you get in the store and what I grow, it looks the same, but you can tell the difference. You can taste the difference. On the banks of the Edamame River, my farm name is Edamame Organics, and we've been organic farming here since 1990. Four years ago, we started a really interesting project called the CSA. A CSA is a community supported agriculture endeavor, which means that there are a group of people in the cities will buy a share in the farm, in the farm's production. And we started doing a market garden out here. And I, I did have beef cattle and we're selling organic beef before the CSA, but it incorporates the beef, I'm growing chickens, and I grow a big vegetable garden. And I deliver into the city twice a week, in the, or twice a month in the summertime, and once a month in the wintertime. The CSA that, I'm, uh, that I do uh, incorporates beef, chickens, vegetables, grains, and eggs. And here are my, my uh, egg layers. And what I have in the summertime is in movable coops. And the girls get pulled every day on fresh grass and uh, gets fed good organic grain and they lay eggs for me. They're about the best eggs in the world. Now this time of year, you're always checking your cobs. Oh, no, there's corn. There's corn. This is corn is northern extra sweet. In the rows themselves, you still have to hand weed, but in between the rows, I'm going to lay down a nice layer of mulch and that will suppress a lot of weed growth, especially in a bad year like this where it's so wet for so long. Usually we dry up in the summertime and we only get maybe one or two weed flushes. But this year it's just a steady picking, uh, it's just nuts. See what happens with broccoli when you cut the first top off, then they start growing little ones. Like this, we knock the big top off. And now they, it starts growing little ones outside, so you can still harvest them. And oh, is this ever good? Mmm. Now there's broccoli. Over there is, is celery. If you never had celery coming from your own garden, or, uh, or this garden, you don't know what celery tastes like. Real celery tastes good. Tomatoes is one of the really, really crucial crops for people. People eat more tomatoes than anything else. And in between the tomato rows is carrot rows here. I don't need, don't need fertilizer, don't need spray. All I need is good weather. <laughs> this don't look like much, but this is the heart of the processing end of it. We've got the kitchens, uh, kitchen in here, processing kitchen, and cold storage, and uh, frozen storage. Right now it's kind of messy because I just came back from a delivery. But usually I have two ladies working in here, uh, processing vegetables, canning, uh, doing a whole bunch of different, different work. What I did was I bought a reefer trailer, an used reefer trailer, and I took the running gear off of it and I blocked it into a freezer end of it and a cold storage end of it. And right now I've got it all full of boxes, of course, but this goes back 40 feet. And this winter, there's gonna be tubs full of carrots, potatoes, beets, rutabagas, 
and squash, whatever I can jam in here. And these are heat lines, hot water heat lines, to keep this thing warm to be above zero. And then the other front part of the trailer is my freezer. And what I put in there is all my chickens and the beef and all the extra frozen veggies that I need to do. I go to Saskatoon, I start out five o'clock in the morning on a Saturday morning. I drive to Saskatoon, uh, people come and meet me at a parking lot. I'm there for about an hour and a half and then I pack up and I go down to Regina and in another parking lot at three o'clock in the afternoon till five. And then I've got a couple of stops on the way home. And my route goes Saskatoon down number 11 to Regina, up to Fort Capel, through Melville, Yorkton, and back up to Hudson Bay. I do sell extra though, because uh, this year I'm, I'll, even in a bad year like this, I've, I grew so much extra that I have extra to, to, uh, to sell at any given time. How this CSA works is you actually buy a share of the garden. And what happens is we sign a contract in May and you pay me 12 post dated checks for what you want. Now, what I have is a full garden box and a half garden box and it depends on how many people you have in your family and how much you eat. Uh, also, there's a thing about the beef. You order how much beef you eat a month and how many chickens you go through a month and eggs too. So it all comes to you in one, in one box or two boxes all through the year. And you resign every year and we just keep on going. And it gives me the money that I can pay the labor to get it all done and a living wage. And it gives you food all year round. This is good, or, or beets. <laughs> I have had most of her soups, but I haven't had this one yet, so we will strongly encourage her to put this uh, as a regular on her menu. Uh, this is great, uh, getting world-class food like this in Virgil, Saskatchewan. Uh, roasted crab apple, cauliflower and potato soup, like nothing I've had before. The hint of curry and coriander really gives it flavor. Jenny has this ability to blend different flavors together that really excite your palate. <laughs> For a lot of us who, who've lived here most of our lives, who know about organic food, you tend to narrow it to, uh, you know, organic beef, organic chicken, you know, a few vegetables. Uh, but boy, when you look at the array of, of herbs and spices and fruits, uh, as Jenny started to talk about just the, the number of organic items, even that would be in tonight's menu, never mind uh, what's available in Saskatchewan, it was a real eye-opener. Normally I find the word humble doesn't fit with me very often, very well. Um, but I was, I was really humbled just to, to know, uh, you know, thinking I knew a little about organic food, but boy, what a, what a learning experience uh, spending some time with Jenny has been. So uh, again, I can hardly wait for more of the food tonight. So now we're coming to the Mr. Gormley part of the menu, and his heritage is um, Australia, your mother, is Australian and your father is Irish. Who's watched Aussie Rules football? Anybody? Anybody? Very short shorts, very crazy men running around. They must not have mothers because if they did, they would not let them do it. <laughs> it's unbelievable. It's a wonder. You'll get addicted to it. So my kids, Emma and Alexander, love watching. And apparently, in the stands, they eat these amazing meat pies. So that's kind of the theme of what we're doing. And John was saying that his mom actually cooked with a lot of lamb when you were growing up. So we have lamb from Jerry and Louis Lakowski. They're near Fairy Glen, out to the east of us here. Wonderful lamb. We slow, slow, slow cooked it with three bottles of, okay, two and a half bottles of Guinness. Um, <laughs> rosemary from... <laughs> rosemary from Deb, that she's actually still growing fresh for me. Wonderful. Something in her eyes. Because it actually draws the heat. Mm. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
and uh, we're all retired. This is wonderful. The, the way she's done the lamb, you can tell it's really well, right. slow cooked. Yep. And, uh, I can't quite taste the Guinness in it, but boy, this is beautiful. It's, uh, it's wonderful. As a non lover of beer or lamb, it's divine. I'm not a fan of lamb until now. No way she gets these combinations from where they She lies awake at night and drinks this stuff up her mind. Like, to me, we can come here anytime. And it doesn't make any difference what the menu is because it's all new anyway. And I know that this love I feel is real So this is, so we kind of did where I was where we are now, where John comes from, and this is just a celebration where food is going, which I hope is local, I hope is organic, and as much as possible, and I hope involves relationships like we're kind of building here. It was beautiful right from the beginning to the end. It was just a fantastic meal. It was an organic orgasm of the taste buds. The whole meal it was awesome. Is it okay to lick the plate? From a beautiful soul comes beautiful food, and Jennifer is a beautiful soul. Oh, Jenny, this was absolutely wonderful. I just love seeing the different things you've come up with. Just one word. Magnifico. <laughs> Thank you, Jenny. This has been a fantastic meal. It's very, very good. I'll be remembering this one for quite a while. And hopefully we can uh, touch base in the future and uh, uh, do a little bit of uh, bartering back and forth. Well, Jenny, at Bedard Creek Acres, we have a tagline. It's experience the beauty of life through taste. And tonight, you are truly an artist, and we have each and every one of us done just that. Thank you. Uh, I'd heard about just how creative and innovative your uh, menu planning is. But boy, tonight with these courses, with this organic food, absolutely an incredible evening. Thank you. It's been a real privilege coming here, and uh, it's been a, a joy for all of us. Um, I want to uh, just uh, on behalf of SOD, I want to present this certificate of appreciation. It certifies, uh, certificate is awarded to the New Ground Cafe and to Chef Jenny Wellams in appreciation of your participation in Dine with the Star and in furthering the cause of local and organic food awareness. The Saskatchewan Organic Directorate has gifted you with a one year complimentary membership to SOD. So, and uh, have a little certificate you can hang up. I've never had a plan. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thanks, man.